Hi, hola, and good day. This is Reading Buckets, and today I'm going to read My Powerful Hair, written by award-winning and New York Times best-selling author Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Steph Litterbird. Book Design by Heather Kelly The illustrations for this book were conceived with a pencil and sketchbook, then brought to life in Procreate. Let's see what this book is about. From the award-winning and best-selling author of We Are Water Protectors comes an empowering picture book about family history, self-expression, and reclaiming your identity. Our ancestors say our hair is our memories our source of strength and power, a celebration of our lives. Mom never had long hair. She was told it was too wild. Grandma couldn't have long hair. Hers was taken from her. But one young girl cannot wait to grow her hair long, for herself, for her family, for her connection to her culture and the earth, and to honor the strength and resilience of those who came before her. From Carol Lindstrom, author of the New York Times bestseller and Caldecott Medal winner, We Are Water Protectors, and debut illustrator Steph Littlebird, comes an empowering and healing celebration of hair and its significance across indigenous cultures. Let's read the dedication. For my mom and grandma, and all survivors of Indian boarding schools, your hair is your power. Giga Wavamin, C.L., to the next seven generations of indigenous creatives and innovators, S.L. My Powerful Hair, written by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Steph Litterbird. Let's turn the page. I can't wait for my hair to grow. Mom never had long hair. She was told hers was too wild. Nokomis couldn't have long hair. Hers was taken. Our ancestors say our hair is our memories, our source of strength. An extension of us. When Nimishumis taught me how to fish for the first time, my hair was at my ears. His stories and the memories of the day are woven into my hair. Our ancestors say we grow our hair long to be close to Mother Earth. When my baby brother was born, my hair touched my shoulders. The gift of welcoming him into the world is woven into my hair. Our ancestors say our hair carries energies and power. It is a celebration of our lives. When my cousin taught me how to make moccasins, my hair was past my shoulders. All the laughter and stories from that day are woven into my hair. Our ancestors say, when a loved one braids your hair, it reinforces the sacredness of your relationship. When my hair reached the middle of my back, Auntie Delia braided it so that I could dance at powwow. All of her teachings and prayers are woven into my hair. Our ancestors say, our hair is our medicine. The vibrancy of our culture and our connections to the earth and to each other are woven through our hair. When Nimishumi's journey on to the spirit world, my hair was past my waist. I cut it. I sent it into the spirit world with him so that he could have my energies. I am growing my hair again. Mom says she wants to grow hers too. We'll do it together. 
Native indigenous peoples believe that hair holds strength and power. Some tribes may be different in how they wear their hair and the specific traditions they honor, but a common thread across many indigenous cultures is the importance of hair. Hair is a physical manifestation of the spirit. Cutting, burying, and burning hair carries strong significance and meaning. In some tribes, it is a tradition to cut your hair and bury it with a loved one for them to bring energies along on their spirit journey. Hair is an extension of native people and holds dreams, memories, joys, trials, tribulations, and triumphs. Hair is a living scrapbook always carried with us, giving strength and courage. Ojibwe Glossary Giga Wavamin, I shall see you. Nimishumis, my grandfather. Nukomis, my grandmother. Author's note. When I was growing up, my mother would not let me grow my hair long. She also did not have long hair. My mom's hair was short in every picture I ever saw of her as a young girl. It was always shot above her ears. I always wondered why she kept it so short. She had beautiful thick black hair. She was full-blooded Anishinaabe Meti, through and through. I could never understand it. And I knew that even she didn't know why, until one day I found a picture of my grandmother and her two sisters, my great aunts. All three of them had shorn black hair above their ears, like my mom. It was a black and white photo. All three sisters had on bright white smokes that stood out in that photo. Mom said the photo was from when they were forced into an Indian boarding school in the early 1900s. I didn't understand then, but now I do. Now I understand that many Native Americans of that era, like my grandmother, were forced into boarding schools, often at gunpoint. They were sent far away from their families and weren't permitted to return until summertime if at all. If the children didn't return from summer break on time, the parents would then receive a harsh letter of reprimand from the school. I have such a letter that was sent to my great-grandfather from the boarding school that my grandmother and her sisters were forced into. It broke my heart to see his reply, begging to keep my great-aunt at home longer to help him out on their farm. Some children never made it back to their families. Many died in the boarding schools from disease and abuse. Their languages, ceremonies, and cultures were stripped from them. The motto of the Indian boarding schools was kill the Indian, save the man. When children finally returned to their families after years in the boarding school, they didn't know their indigenous languages any longer didn't know their ceremonies, didn't know their culture. It was all intended to die in those boarding schools. And it did die. I understand that, to my grandmother, long hair was taught to be a sign of wildness and savageness. For her not to be seen that way, she had to keep her hair short, and her daughter's hair, and her granddaughter's hair. Once I discovered where that mindset originated from, I knew I had to grow my hair and break the vicious cycle. Now was my chance to reclaim my identity and return the power of my ancestors to my family by growing my power. And now I share my story with others so that they can understand who we are and why our hair is celebrated for the strength, power, and resilience that it holds. Thank you for listening to My Powerful Hair, written by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Steph Littlebird, book designed by Heather Kelly. The illustrations for this book were conceived with a pencil and sketchbook, then brought to life in Procreate. This is Reading Buckets. Bye!